Welcome to today's lesson. Let's together look at tradition questions on eigenvalues, eigenvectors, and the diagonalization of matrices. We've already looked at these concepts of uh, eigenvalues, eigenvectors, and the diagonalization of matrices. Of course, by now, you already know how to determine, how to find eigenvalues of a matrix and their corresponding eigenvectors. And you also know how to diagonalize a matrix. So today we just want to do more questions so that you get to know how to answer questions from these three concepts. Uh, how do you tell if a matrix is diagonalizable? And so again, that is what we'll be looking at today. We already had tackled that, but uh, today's lesson to be able to tell how to determine if a matrix is a diagonalizable. But just to touch on that, if you're given an n by n matrix, you're given by an, an n by n matrix, and then we will say that this matrix is diagonalizable. This matrix is diagonalizable. Diagonalizable. If it has, if it has n, Linearly independent, linearly independent eigenvectors. So that is what we'll be looking at to tell if a matrix is diagonalizable. That is the way I, in fact, will be using this. I'll be finding out if this n by n matrix has n linearly independent eigenvectors. And so in that case, then it means you can find the um, matrix, non-singular matrix P, non-singular matrix P such that P inverse times A gives us D, where D is the diagonal matrix, and the A is the matrix that we've been given. This P, we are really discussed it in, the, in our previous video and we said that this P, the diagonalizing matrix P, would be the matrix formed when we write the eigenvalue vectors as columns. So this P is a matrix whose columns are the eigenvectors. So those are some of the things we'll be looking at, but first let's look at uh, the first question. So we'll go to the first question. The first question is, this is matrix A, find all eigenvalues of A. Then find a maximum set of linearly independent eigenvectors of A. Then is A diagonalizable? D is P inverse times A times B. Now let's first of all do part A. But given this matrix A, so determining eigenvalues, and I just remind you, the first way was that we take this matrix A and then subtract lambda i, where i, since this is a 3 by 3 matrix, since it is a 3 by 3 matrix, i will be a 3 by 3 identity matrix, and lambda is n scalar. Then we will find the determinant of this matrix, and this is what we would then call the characteristic polynomial and equate it to zero to solve for lambda. So this is what we used to do. The other way is that if I'm doing this three, three by three matrix, I'll just get lambda cubed, then minus lambda square multiplied by the trace of A, multiplied by the trace of A, and then add lambda multiplied by uh, the cofactor of element, element in position 1, 1, column one, 1, column 1, plus the cofactor of the element in column 2, no, row 2, column 2, and then plus the cofactor of the element in row 3, column 3. And then for, after that, we shall subtract the determinant of A. 
And I believe this is the easiest of these two methods, and so it's the one that I'll be using. I'll be using that. So let's go straight to the answer. I want to do it here, then we create some space. And we'll do it here. So let me just rewrite my A. My A was um, 8, 2, negative 2, and then I had 4, 10, negative 4, and then finally I had a 2, uh, 2, 4. This was my matrix A. Now, so I want to get the characteristic polynomial. It will be lambda cubed minus lambda square modulated by the trace of A. And then plus lambda modulated by the cofactor of the element in over one column one plus the cofactor of the element in over two column two plus the cofactor of the element in row 3, column 3, then plus the determinant of A. Okay, the trace of A is just the sum of the elements along this main diagonal. So this is the lambda cube minus lambda square. The sum of these elements, that is 8, plus 10, plus 4, the elements in the leading diagonal, that gives us the trace, then plus lambda, but oh, this is supposed to be minus, this is supposed to be minus, let me just uh, rectify before we go far, this is supposed to be minus. Supposed to be minus. So uh, you recall that for me, you already have this formula. Now, so this is the cofactor of the element in row one, column one. This is this element, element eight. So its cofactor, just be it the row of eight and the column of eight. So the determinant of the matrix that remains is that cofactor. So the determinant of 10, negative four, Two four. Then plus the cofactor of the element in row two column two. Row two. This row two column two. This element. So this cofactor of the element in row two column two. I've already said that this element. This is the element ten. So delete the row ten and the column of ten. The matrix that remains is 8, negative 2, and the 2, 4. That's the matrix that remains. And then plus the cofactor of the element in row 3, column 3. That element is 4. Row 3, column 3. That element is 4. Delete this row 4. And, no, the row of 4 and the column of 4. And you are left with 8, 2. And uh, four ten. And then minus the determinant of this matrix. You know to get the determinant of this matrix, you have very many ways of getting the determinant of matrix. I told you so many ways. In fact, one of the ways is that uh, you can just remind you, but I'm not doing the determinant, I'm just reminding one of the ways is this, or a 3 by 3 matrix, we used to this method. 2, 2, 4, and then we added these two columns here, added these two columns. And then multiplied along this diagonal, and multiplied along this diagonal, And then multiply along this diagonal and added those three results. So there is the product here plus the product here plus the product here. Added those. And then again, multiply along this diagonal. So 
So you already have answer A where you multiply the first three diagonals and add the results. So multiply along these three other diagonals and add their results separately. Multiply this other, along these other three diagonals and add their results separately. Now check the last result. Let me call this one's product four, product five, and then product six. And this other one was product one, product two, and then product three. Subtract the second sum from the first sum. So we had uh, the first sum where we multiplied along the first three diagonals. That was the first sum. And then we got the sum again along the other three diagonals. So subtract this last sum from the first sum and get your result as three. So that would be the determinant of this matrix. But we have so many other ways of doing that. So the, this is the result. The determinant of A is the result. Now, so when you proceed, this would be lambda cube. Now, what is this? This is 18 plus 4, that is 22. And what is this? So this is lambda into, let's just find the sum here. The, 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 the determinant here is 40 plus 8, which is 48. The determinant here is that 2 plus 4, which is that six. It can just be that two plus four. This is minus, so minus, minus, this plus four. And this is 80 minus eight. 80 minus eight would be 72. Then minus six, three six. You can use your calculator to do this. 48 plus 36 plus 72. Let me also use my calculator here. Okay, is your calculator. This would be lambda cubed minus 22 lambda square plus 156 lambda minus 360. This is the characteristic for lambda. Equate this to zero and solve for lambda. So let me equate it to zero and solve for lambda. So it gives a cubic equation. And solving a cubic equation, we look at this constant term. And uh, on the right, it's uh, factors. So the root to this equation is one. Some of the factors, it means that cubic equations where you have three roots, you have three solutions. So those solutions should come from among the factors of the stress system. So the roots or the factors, the factors of the risk are just one plus or minus, we say plus or minus one, plus or minus two, plus or minus three plus or minus four, plus or minus five, plus or minus six, plus or minus eight, plus or minus nine, plus or minus 10, and so on. So we have so many factors, three six has so many factors. So the three roots to this equation must come from these factors. So we try, we use trial to, see, to find one factor. And then after finding one factor, we then divide that into this equation to give us a, a quadratic equation, which we then factorize. So we just use trial and error. Let's try one and see whether one is a root here. So if one, if lambda is one, then we'd have one cubed minus 22, times one square plus 156 
minus 36. And if you use your calculator, you will find that this will not give you zero. That will not give you zero. So that means that one is not a root. Yeah, it's not a solution to this, to this equation. Let's try two. Let's try two. So when you try two, then we have two cubed, which will be eight. And then minus 22, followed by two square, which is four. And then plus 156. Uh, model by 2, then minus 360. Use your calculator and see what you get. The answer is not zero. The answer is not zero. So try all of these other values. Try all of them until you find one that will give you the answer to be zero. Now, if you try 6, if you try 6, that means you have 6 cubed minus 22 Modular by 6 square, which is 36, plus 56, what? No, 156, modular by 6, minus 360, and use your calculator, you'll find a zero. So that means that a 6 is a root to this equation. 6 is a root to this equation. No, 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 not this one, this one. 6 is a root to this. It is a solution. So let's now proceed and find the other roots. We don't need to continue by trial and error because since the rest of the has so many factors, that will take us a long time trying all the factors. Since we've already found one of the factors, it's now easy. We are now ready to find the others by long division or by synthetic division. We can use synthetic division which is easy. Now, so we've now found that one of the factors, one of the roots is, um, is lambda 1 is equal to 6. So that lambda, one, lambda minus 6, let, let me just call it lambda 1, but I need lambda. So, let, so that lambda minus 6 is a factor of this is a factor to this solution, this equation. Now, how do we proceed to find the others? So let me just erase uh, some part, this part so that we can now find the others, the other, uh, the other roots. But we already have that six other roots, so that makes our work very easy. So we now use synthetic division to get the other roots. So six is a fact. So let's write the coefficients of this equation. We have well, the coefficient of uh, lambda cubed is one. The coefficient of lambda square is negative 22. The coefficient of uh, lambda is 156, which is a positive. And then the other coefficient, this one, the constant there is negative 360. So by synthetic division, the first thing I'll do is to bring this one down. And then what I have here by that, 1 times 6 will be 6. Add negative 22 plus 6 to get negative 16. And then negative 16 times 6 will be negative 96. Add this, add um, negative yeah, positive 156 plus negative, this is negative 96, just add to get 0 then 6. See this key? And then multiply this 60 times 6, 6 times 60 to get 360. And then add again to get 0. So 0 here is the remainder actually, the one we got when we plugged in 6 for lambda. When we plug 6 for right lambda, we got the remainder of this here. So that means if we were to divide the 6 into this, we would get a quadratic equation lambda square, 1 lambda square, minus 16 lambda, and then plus 16. 
Now remember we had the lambda 1 is 6. So we can now factorize this to get lambda minus, is it minus 10? So just factorize this, you know how to factorize. Let's just factorize it together. So I'm getting lambda minus 6 and lambda minus 10. That's what we get, because if I multiply lambda, lambda times lambda, I get lambda square. Lambda times negative 10, I get negative 10 lambda, then negative 6 lambda, which will give us negative 16 lambda, and then 16. Now, so to get lambda 2 and lambda 3, we just equate this to 0. And when you equate this to 0, you find that lambda 2 would be 6, and lambda 3 would be 10. And don't forget that we have lambda 1, which was also 6. So we found that our matrix A has three eigen values. So these are our eigen values. These are our eigen values. So if this uh, lambda 2, no, lambda 1, is 6 and lambda 2 is also 6 and so that means this matrix is of uh, this 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 agent value this agent value here is of uh, two multiplicity so we have two eigen values uh, which are the same and lambda 3 here is 10 lambda 3 there is 10 so we are done with the first question the second question wants us to find the eigen vectors. So let's now proceed to that question. I just want to delete this. Just want to delete uh, this one. And let's remember our eigen values. Let's now do part B. And let's remember that to get eigen vectors, so we take the matrix A minus number I. And then I'm gonna this by the eigen vector x and this let me call it w. Let me call it w and then it goes to zero. I want to let my w here be xyz. Of course, the eigen vectors are column vectors. We write it in column form. So I want my w to be done. So our matrix A, let's just remember what our matrix A was. And remember that the first eigen value, lambda 1, was 6. So subtract this 6 along the leading diagonal of matrix A. So when you subtract 6 from the leading diagonal, you have 2, 2, negative 2. And then 4, 10, no, 10 minus 6. 10 minus 6, that would be 4. That would be 4, and then negative 4. And then we have 2, 2. And then we have a 4 here minus 6, it would be negative 2. Multiply like this by our W, which is x, y, z, and equal to 0. When this happens, when you can now use Gaussian elimination, use Gaussian elimination, I want to use Gaussian elimination. What we then get is um, 2, 2, negative 2, 0, and this will be 4, 4, negative 4, 0, and this will be 2, 2, negative 2, 0. Uh, you can multiply this first row by, you can multiply the first row by 1 out of 2. When you do that, you get 1, 1, negative 1, 0. And these other rows remain the way they are. These other rows just remain the way they are. Now, so having created this one here, we use it to create a zero in this position and then zero in this position. That means I need to multiply row one by four 
and subtract the result from row two. So that means I want the new row two. So it will be the current row two minus four row one. I also want a row three, new row three. So this will be the current row three minus two row one. That's what I want to do. So when I do that, row one remains where it is, but then this becomes zero, 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 zero. And this also becomes zero, 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 zero when you perform this operation. So what we now have, what we have is x plus y minus z is zero. x plus y minus z is zero. So you then realize that x is a leading variable, but y and z are free variables. So since they are free variables, we let them be parameters. We can say let y be a parameter a, and z the parameter b. So if that happens, then what is then what is x? You, from here, you can see that x would be negative y plus z. So x would be negative y plus z. When you make x the subject of the formula, y will go the other side, it becomes negative. And the z will also go that a side of equal sign becomes positive. So x becomes that. So what is our vector? Our vector w, what is it now? So let me just erase some space here, create some space. And now see what my w becomes. Because it's this w that then gives us the agent. It was the agent vector. It was the agent vector. So we just want to write it now. We began by letting be x, y, z. So, but we've now found what x is, y, what y is, and what z is. So we just need to rewrite it. So that our w therefore becomes, it, in fact, it was x, y, z. But we've just noticed that x is negative a plus b. And y is, this y is a, we can say plus zero b. And then z was in fact b. Z was b. We can say plus zero. And this is the same as if we were to write this separate, uh, separate x and a and b would have uh, A here, and A would go into this part as negative one, one here, and we also have B going here, one, zero, one. So that means if I'm asked for the eigen vectors corresponding to eigenvalue six, if I'm asked for the eigenvectors corresponding to eigenvalue six, then I can see four of them. I can see that the first one is negative one, one, zero, and I can see that the other one is one, zero. These are the eigenvectors, eigenvectors, corresponding to lambda one is six. So the first lambda one, we had lambda one is six, and then we had also lambda one is six, lambda two six. So that means one could be for this and the other could be for this. So the same six, the same six. So one could be for this and the other one for this. So these two eigenvalues have two eigenvectors. We can all see that. So let me let me just um, call this first eigenvector as u, and this one as v. Let me just call it. Let me just call this one u and v. There's no problem. Uh, this uh, I'm not even supposed to call them u or v. They are just eigenvectors. But I just want to make my work easier. The next question.
Let us now find the eigenvector for lambda is equal to 10. That was another eigenvalue, so let's just erase this. And uh, so when lambda is 10, so we put lambda 3. So let's subtract, we know that we want a minus 10i by w and equate this to 0. But w, we want it to be x, y, z. Want w to be x, y, z. So let's just uh, subtract 10 from the leading diagonal of pair, and that will give us negative 2, 2, negative 2. Just subtracting 10 from the leading diagonal. You already have matrix there. You already have it, so just subtract 10, and this is 4. This will give us 0. And this will give us negative 14. When you subtract 10. No, no. From the reading data, not uh, from the entire row. It's just from the reading data. So this remains to be negative 4. And then you have 2, 2, and then negative 6. x, y, z is equal to 0, 0, 0. Now let's use Gaussian elimination. This would be negative 2, 2, negative 2, 0. And this would be 4, 0, negative 4. It's always what to ensure that you've done uh, that, that subtraction clearly. You may forget and subtract from the entire row. Just ensure that you subtract only the leading diagonal. From the leading diagonal. So that we have negative 2, 0, and negative 6. And the rest remain the way they are. So that this would be 2, 2, negative 6, and this would be 0, 0. Just to do as we did for the first uh, again value, we did multiply row 1 by 1 out of this time, let's multiply it by a half, negative one. Negative a half. I want a positive value here. So when you multiply row one by a half, negative a half, what do you get? Get one here, negative one here, and one here, then zero. And these other rows, let them remain the way they are. So row three also remains where it is. This was negative six, and that is zero. So now, row one remains where it is, but use row one to create a zero here and a zero. That means row one times four subtract from row two, you get a zero here. This by four subtract from that, you have a four here. And this by four, and subtract from this, the one negative eight, and that's zero. And then now sub multiply row one by two, and subtract from row three to get a zero at this point. This one by two, and subtract from this, we have four here. This one by two, and subtract from this, we have a negative eight here. Now, you can now use row 3 to create a 0 here, and that would give you row 1 remains where it is, row 2 remains where it is, and this one will be 0, 0, 0, 0. So when you use row 2, when you subtract row 2 from row 3. Now, so what do we now have? Let me just write it here. Let me just write it at the top. What I have is x minus y plus z is zero when I use the first row. And the second row tells me that 4y minus 8z is zero. So then I can see that x and y are leading variables and z is a free variable. So let the free variable be a. 
a parameter a so that if there is a case then what happens to y using the second equation would be 8a 4y would be 8a which means that y would be 2a y would be 2a now let's go to the first equation and find x x would be y minus z x will be y minus z but what is y 2a what is z z is a that means that x is also x is also so what then follows is for us to write the agent the agent vector w so what does it become we already have x we already have y we also have uh, z so we only need to to write to replace them replace x replace y then replace z so w therefore which was x y z is x is a y is 2a and z is a in fact we can factor a out to have 1 to 1 so that if i'm asked for the agent vector corresponding to corresponding to lambda 3 is 10 is and give it as one two one that would be the agent vector so you then recall from our previous video the use of the words and now space uh, agent space and uh, basis you then recall from our previous video but now this is the question we wanted to find the agent vectors and we already have this uh, we had uh, found an agent vector u, call it u, another one would call it w, no, v, so let's call this one t. Let's call it t, but uh, as I already said, this is not important. But let's just call it t. And let's go back to the question and see what the question wanted us to. Find. Because I remember something like uh, find maximum set. Let's just go back. Again, vectors. Now, these vectors that we found, they can also different again values of the same matrix. Again, values of the same matrix. Those vectors will be linearly independent. But now we want the set of the sets. So, what does that question want us to find? Set S is just a set of those vectors. If the right a set, the first vector was uh, negative one. Let me write it as uh, there's no problem. Negative one. There was uh, what is it? Negative one. Let's just recall the vector. Negative one, one is zero. I think that was the vector. Then the second vector was um, was it one zero one? And then this the other vector that we just found a few minutes ago has been one two one. So this is the set that the question is asking. Is the set the set of the agent vectors? This is sorry, the question is asking. Good. Now let's look at the last question. The last question is: Is a diagonalized? Now let me just give you a condition for matrix matrix A to be diagonalizable. So the condition is: is that if matrix A is an n by n matrix, then Then A is diagonalizable if we can find N linearly independent, linearly independent, independent eigenvectors. 
if you can find n linearly independent, you see it was an n by n matrix. So for our case, we have a three by three matrix. That means, can we find three linearly independent eigenvectors? If that is possible, then matrix A here, it will be said to be diagonalizable. I think I'll stick to this to tell if a matrix is diagonalizable. We have other ways. For example, can you find a matrix B, which is uh, non singular? Matrix B must be non singular. And remember that matrix P is a matrix from where the columns of P are the eigenvectors. The columns of P are the eigenvectors. So let's now look at the question. The question is, is matrix A diagonalizable? My answer is yes. It is diagonalizable. And I've given my reason because I can find three linearly independent eigenvectors. And this was a three by three matrix. So if I can, since I can find three linearly independent eigenvectors, I can comfortably say that I can diagonalize this matrix. And so what was the question after this? The other question was that if we yes, for the eigenvectors, we already have the eigenvectors, so P would just be the eigenvectors arranged in column form. The first eigenvector, I remember negative one, zero, one. I remember that. No, it was negative one. Negative one, one, zero. And then the other one was one, zero, one. Then the one that we just found was in one, two, one. So this is P. There is no formula in arranging these vectors. You can begin with any. I can, you can even begin with this one here. Yeah? N followed by any. So long as you arrange those vectors in column form. Now, find P. So what, 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 what would be D? D would be the double matrix formed. Now, what was the eigenvector value for this eigenvector? This eigenvector its eigenvalue was, was it four? No, it was six. It was six. The eigenvalue for this was six. Then I followed it by zero, zero in this row. Then zero. This eigenvector, its eigenvalue was six. So I put it there. And then this eigenvector, its column, its eigenvalue was 10. Then zero, zero. So as I said, in arranging the value the vectors in P, there's no formula. But once you've arranged them in P, remember the order in which um, they are and use the same order to arrange their eigenvalues. So if the eigenvector 1 here, its eigenvalue must be the first one. And then this eigenvector here, its eigenvalue must be the second one in this second row. And then the eigenvector here, the third eigenvector here, its eigenvalue must be seen. So if I would have begun by this, one, two, one, if I would have begun, then this ten would have come. Here. So that is the only condition. And we we'll answer that question. That question wanted us to find P and D. So that uh, you see this D, this D just be the same as P inverse A, P. At your own time, try and find P inverse, the inverse of this matrix, and see whether this product will give us this. Let's look at uh, another question. Let us now look at this second question. And it's just similar to the one we already answered. The question is find all eigenvalues of M. Find a maximum set S of linearly independent eigenvectors of M. And then is A diagonalizable? If yes, find P such that D will be given by P inverse times A times P. Now, so straight away we shall find the characteristic polynomial of A, and then equate it to zero, and solve for lambda. 
for them we just walk some steps here for our working just move this one up a bit move it up i think that is okay so it's enough space for us i first of all want to write our matrix a here so that just we determine the characteristic of mommy we know what we are doing so a matrix a is six negative two two and then we have uh, 14 negative 10 2 then we have 12 negative 12 and 4 this is a matrix n. now the characteristic polynomial is given by lambda cubed minus lambda square multiplied by the trace of a plus Lambda multiplied by the sum of the cofactor in position one one uh, plus cofactor in position two two and the cofactor in position three three and then minus the de the determinant of matrix n. So this will be given by lambda cubed minus lambda square. What about the trace six? plus minus 10 plus 4 and this is zero plus lambda into uh, the cofactor of this position is the matrix that remains when i delete the row of sticks and the column of sticks and that is a negative 10 to negative 12 and then plus the cofactor in the position row two column two, this position will be six two and then twelve four. And then plus the cofactor in the position, this position, delete the row and the column will be six negative two, and this is fourteen ten. Fourteen negative ten. Let's just go, let's just see that we've written the right thing. The cofactor in this position delete the column and the row. That will be six two and twelve four. Let's close the bracket. Then minus the determinant of a. Now, so this has given us zero actually. So this one is lambda cubed and. Uh, so lambda squared times zero will be zero. Then this one will be lambda into this is negative forty minus minus twenty four. That is um it's sixteen negative. That is sixteen. And this is twenty four minus twenty four, which is zero. And then this is, this was negative 10. Yeah. It was negative 10. Just like it. it was negative 10. So negative 60 minus minus 28. That was negative We know how to get the determinant of the matrix. The determinant of this matrix is negative 128. So this gives us a lambda cube. What is this? Negative 48. Negative 48 lambda plus 128. This is a cubic equation. We can solve it. Uh, by looking at this constant term, the factors of this constant term, three of these factors are roots to this solution, to this equation. Or let's see, let me put it to zero. Let me put it to zero. First of all, put it to zero so that we can solve for them. So three of the factors of this, the factors of this are just plus or minus one, 
plus or minus 2, 3 can not, so plus or minus 4, we can go there, 6, 6 can not, 5 can not, so plus or minus 8, etc. So three of these are solutions to this equation. Are solutions to this equation. <clears throat> So you use trial and see which one gives, which one accepts to be with it. You use one here. For example, you can try one. So if you try one, what do you get? You can have one cube, which is one, minus 48 times one, and then plus 125, 128. And clearly, this is not equal to zero. So one is not a right. What about negative one? Negative one, you don't have one. So try negative one. When you try negative one, you have negative one cube, which is negative one, then plus 48, then plus 128. And again, this is not equal to zero. So negative one is not a root. What about try four? Let me try four. When you try four, you can also try to proceed. I try negative four, negative two, then come try four. But when you try four, you find that um, it will be a root <clears throat> because this will give you this will give you four cubed minus forty eight multiplied by four plus one twenty eight and this will be zero. So that means that <clears throat> four is a root to this equation. So since four is a root, then we say that. Uh, the first eigenvalue, the first eigenvalue, lambda is just one, lambda one. So, so lambda one is four. <clears throat> so we would uh, we would continue to check all the other factors, but that will take us a long time. So the easiest is to use long division, or let me use synthetic division to reduce this cubic equation to a quadratic equation and factorize that quadratic equation to get the other ones. Now, the coefficients of this cubic equation, we have one here, one lambda cube, and then lambda square, we have a zero, and then lambda, we have the 48, and then we have the constant, one point. Bring this one down. One times four, you have four, then add the four here. Four times four is 16. Add this and get negative 32. Yes, negative 32 times four, get negative 128. Add this and get minus zero. <clears throat> so the quadratic equation here is lambda square plus four lambda minus that two is equal to zero. So it's this that we again factorize to get the other roots. And so <clears throat> when you factorize this, you get lambda minus four, then lambda plus eight is equal to zero, meaning that Lambda two, lambda two be putting this to zero. Lambda two is four, and the lambda three is negative eight. Lambda three is negative eight. <clears throat> so lambda four, the first lambda one was four. Lambda two is four, and the lambda three is eight. Those are the eigen values. So eigen values. We found lambda one is four, lambda two is four, and uh, lambda three is eight. So what is the question now? <clears throat> the question that we have is the first question. And let's just go back and find read the question. Let's go back and read the question. The question is. Find the eigenvalues, you've just done that. Find a maximum set of linearly independent eigenvectors. 
and is irreversible. So let's proceed to part B. Let's get the eigen vector. We found that lambda one was four. So when lambda is four, let's subtract. Let's find the eigen vectors. So let W, which is x one z, be the eigen vector. Let it be eigen vector. So what we want to do, therefore, with this A minus lambda i followed by w equal to z. But in this case, our lambda is four. So in fact, we want A minus four i followed by w and equal to z. <clears throat> so what is A? What is A? A So, L was 622. L was um, 6, negative 2, 2, 14, negative 10, 2, 12, negative 12, 7, so, so when, when I, when lambda is, when lambda is 4, let's subtract that from, uh, the leading diagonal is subtract that from the leading diagonal. When you subtract four from the leading diagonal, you have um, you have uh, two, negative two, two, and then uh, fourteen, negative fourteen, and then two, and this will be twelve, negative twelve, and then zero. Multiply this by x, y, z. To get a zero, zero. Use Gaussian elimination. So by Gaussian elimination, by Gaussian elimination, we would have two, negative two, two, zero, fourteen, 14 to 0, and uh, this is 12, negative 12, 0, 0. Reduce this to echelon form. <clears throat> okay. Let me just maintain this two. Or should I make it? Let's just maintain a two. But you can make it one if you want. Now multiply these two by seven and subtract from this second row to get a zero here. To get a zero here. I'm multiplying this by seven. This by seven from this. This by seven from this. This by seven is 14. 14 from this, get negative 12. Okay, now multiply by six, the first row by six and subtract that row by six from that zero. By six from that number zero, and by six, get it twelve from that to get it twelve. Of course, the second and third equations are similar. The rows are similar. So let me just you could ignore one of them, but let me just write this. And uh, that way. So that uh, I used to be added this to that to get a zero. <clears throat> so what I now have is that 2x minus 2y plus 2z is zero, and I also have negative 12z is zero. The second equation tells me that z, so that uh, the second equation tells me that uh, z is zero. But now, I discovered that um, x was a leading variable, z was a leading variable, and y was not a leading variable. So I say let y, which is a free variable, be n. So what does the first equation tell me? The first equation tells me that 2x minus 2n plus 0 is 0. In other words, x is 10. In other words, x. 
So what is the W? This was our W. So W therefore, which was uh, x y z, becomes x is a. What was y? Y was a, and z is b. So in fact, this is the same as a into one of z. So the eigenvector therefore is eigenvector is one of z. For any other vector, multiple of this, any other multiple of that. So let me, let me just create some space, create some space for, I can continue doing my work here. Create some space here. In fact, remember that I've found that uh, when lambda is four, we had the two eigenvalues each four. Lambda one was four, lambda two was four. But we've only found one eigenvector corresponding to lambda is four. What I mean is we've only found that when lambda is four, the eigenspace or the null space, let me use the null space. The null space of the one, one, zero. This would be the null space. But lambda is equal to four, there were two, two of them. They were, it was a, an eigenvec value of double multiplicity, multiplicity two. But it has only given us one eigenvector. So let's look at um, the other one. It was lambda, lambda was what? Lambda, then the other eigenvector was, value was when lambda is, lambda three was, uh, negative 8. So we subtract negative 8 from the leading diagonal and you have a negative 2. So when you subtract, um, subtract negative 8 from 6. So it's 6 minus minus 8. That would be 14. You just correct that. That would be 14. And this other one would be negative 2, then 2. This other one would be 14. And then so just like adding h along the leading diagonal, so this would be negative two, and this would be two, and this would be twelve. Negative twelve. Add eight here. And this would be twelve. You add h the leading diagonal. Multiply by w, which is x y z, and equate to zero zero, and use Gaussian elimination. This is Gaussian image. So, this would be 14, negative 2, 2, 0. 14, negative 2, 2, 0. You notice that the first equation and the second one are similar, but let's just proceed. Reduce to a form. This would be 14, negative 2, Two zero. <clears throat> Subtract first row from the second row to get to zero. Zero, zero, zero. Now, this second equation, a third equation, third row, so we multiply the first row. We want to multiply, take the third row minus 12 over 14. Only by row one. Twelve over fourteen only by row one. So row three. Row three. So we want to get the new row three. The new row three we take the old row three minus twelve over fourteen over row one. So this by twelve over fourteen. This is twelve separate from that you have zero. This by twelve out of fourteen. What do you get? You get negative 24 out of 14. And then subtract it from 12, negative 12 minus negative 2 multiplied by 12. 
12 out of 14. So, of course, this becomes positive. The same as uh, 112 plus 24 out of 14. The LCM is 14. Let me just use my calculator to see what that is. Yes, you can also use your calculator so that we still get the same answer. What is my calculator? Here? Okay, I have my calculator. This is negative 12. That is 12 times 14. Plus 24. So 144 negative. 144 to 14. To be negative. I don't know what, whether I've done the right thing. 144 out of 14. I don't know whether I've done the right thing actually. Let me see. Let me try it again. It is negative 12. Of course, this one has been as good. It's negative 12 minus minus 2. That, so this is 24 out of 14. So what I did was I took negative 12, negative 12. Multiplied by 14, and to this result, I added 24, and I got negative 1.4. That is correct. Now, what about here? I'll take 12 minus 2 multiplied by 12 out of 14, and so this is the same as 12. Minus 24 to 14. So I then take 12 times 24. 12 times, no, 12 times 14. Where am I getting? 12 times 14. And then minus 24. That gives me 144 out of 14. Positive. 144 out of 14. And here I have a zero. Okay, so I think I need a bigger space. So let me just erase this part. Erase this part. And I can see that I have the first equation and the second equation. So those are the equations that I want to use. The first equation says that 14x minus 2y plus 2z is 0. And this other one tells me if I was to multiply through by 14, I will have uh, negative 144y plus 144z is 0. In fact, these equations can be, you can factorize, divide the first one by 2 to get 7x minus y plus z giving us 0. And the other one divided by negative 144 to get y minus z is 0. Now, here I can see that uh, only z is a free variable. So let z be a. So that will then mean, the last equation will then mean that uh, y becomes a also. Y is also a. What about the first equation? What does it say about x? It says that x will be a minus a out of 7, which is 0. So we now have uh, a as 0, y as a, z as a. So let's now write the eigen vector. Let me just erase some part of this. I want to erase this part. Erase this. I think I have enough space now. I just want to erase that. So 
So, what is W? W is a, and, and it's X, Y, Z. Plus X, Y, Z. But X is zero. Y is A and Z is A. This is just the same as A into zero one. So that P negative eight, that null space is this. Zero one one. Zero one one is the null space. Now, so the question was, is this a matrix A diagonalizable? Is it diagonalizable? And the answer is no. It's not, because I can see that it was a three by three matrix, but we only have uh, two eigenvectors. We needed to have three eigenvectors for it to be diagonalizable because we are dealing with a three by three matrix. But we only have two eigenvectors, so this matrix is not diagonalizable. Therefore, we cannot find a diagonalizing matrix P. We cannot find it. We cannot find an unsingular matrix P. We cannot find an unsingular singular matrix P such that P inverse times D no, times A times P is D. You cannot find this and singular matrix. Now let's look at um, the question if we answered it exhaustively. Oh, this part will not done it. This part will not done it. We only got the eigenvectors, and we did not write the set. So the set has to be the set of uh, the vectors. The first vector was what? We found um, the first eigenvector was uh, 0, 0, no, 0, 1, 1. We had 1, 1, 0. And then the other one was uh, 0, 1. So these are uh, what the eigen vectors, and therefore this is the set S. So that is the part that we had omitted. But the rest we've already answered it, and that is how we do this question. Let's look at the next one. Now let's look at this question three, which says that let G be a mapping defined by uh, T of T maps A, B, C to A plus half of B minus C, comma, A plus 3 over 2B minus 2C, comma, and then a half of A plus a half of B minus a half of C. Now, so this is the question. Then find all eigenvalues of T, and then the, find the basis of each eigenspace. And then the other question is T diagonalizable. And if he has find the best is S that diagonalizes T. And then find the diagonal representation matrix. And let's go straight to the answer. And uh, the way we do this question is just a similar way we doing the other questions. Now, so what you do is that you formulate the matrix here. The matrix that I have is that let me just move this. Let me move this on up a bit. Now, so the matrix matrix T will be given by the first element here is a plus a half of B. So that is the coefficient is one. Then the coefficient of B is a half. The coefficient of C is negative one. <clears throat> then we have for this other one, we have the coefficient of A is one. And then it's three out of two. And then we have negative two. <clears throat> then we have um, a half. And then another half. And then a negative a half. So this is the matrix T. So what the question is asking is, suppose we're given this matrix T, can you find 
all the agent values. And then can you find the basis of each agent first? And then it too, is this T diagonalizable? So this is the question, and that we shall proceed to find the eigenvalues of this T. And we know how we normally do it. So to do this, the eigenvalues, we already said, and we've seen in the previous examples, that we'll have lambda square, or lambda cube, minus lambda square, multiplied by the trace of T, the trace of T, then uh, plus lambda multiplied by uh, the C11 plus C22 plus C33 and then minus the determinant of T minus the determinant of T. <clears throat> now, so this is some as lambda cubed this is lambda cubed minus the trace here. We just add one plus this one plus three out of two minus a half. Of course, the LCM there is two, and this will be two plus three minus one, which is two. So this is two lambda cubed, lambda square. And then plus a half, a lambda plus lambda, lambda by. Now, so we are this element. So when we delete the column of that element one and the, the row of this element one and the column of element one, we are left with a matrix. Three out of two, negative two, and then a half, and uh, negative a half. So the determinant of this, then plus. Now at this element, delete the row of this element and the column of this element, and then you have one negative one, and uh, delete that and that, about half and negative half, a half and negative half, and then plus. We have this element. Delete the column and the row of this element uh, negative a half, and what you would have would be one, then a half, uh, this other one would be one, and then it's three out of two. The determinant of this, then let's close the bracket, then minus the determinant of A, no, the determinant of T. Now, so when you do this, let me just create some space here. Create some space on the left side. Create my space here on the left side. So that the right side is still there for your reference. Now, so this will give you lambda cube minus two lambda square. Now, this determinant is uh, a quarter. You just multiply this diagonal, which is um, negative three out of four minus, but this one will be plus one, plus one. And this other determinant will be zero. And then this other one will be one. And then you know how to get the determinant of the entire matrix T which will be a quarter, so negative a quarter. So this, if we simplify, what we get here is lambda cube minus two lambda square, but this is five out of four lambda, and then minus a quarter. Now, this is the characteristic polynomial now, to get lambda, we put it to zero. And let's multiply through by the denominator, which is uh, four. And that gives us four lambda cubed minus eight lambda square plus five lambda. 
minus one is equal to two. Now, what we have here is a two pp equation. We want to solve that, so let me just create some space now. Here, yeah. I hope you've already copied this. So just create space here so that we do we solve this cubic equation from here. Now we have this cubic equation. To solve that, we look at the constant term and then look at the coefficient of uh, uh, lambda cube. So I want we should, to, to get the roots, the roots to this cubic equation, we need to have R out of S, where R will be the factors of the constant term, which are plus or minus one, and then S will be the factors of uh, the coefficient of lambda cube, which is plus or minus one, plus or minus two, and plus or minus four. So the factors of this term. So that the roots to this equation will be one of the following. I want to divide S into R. And when you divide the positive or negative one into positive or negative one, you get a positive or negative one. And when you divide it two here, you get a positive or a negative one half. When you divide four here, you get a positive or a negative a quarter. So three of these Three of these are solutions of this. So we only need to get one. And after getting one of them, of them we shall use uh, the method we've been using, the synthetic division, to see whether we can reduce this equation to quadratic equation. Now, when you try, so you use trial as you've been doing for the other questions. You try positive or negative one and see whether this will give you zero, whether the left side here will give you zero. But you try a half also, positive or negative a half. So I tried a half, a positive a half, and I discovered that positive a half would give me zero. So positive a half is one of uh, my roots. So lambda one is a half. Then now use synthetic division. Use synthetic division, I have a half there. And then uh, The coefficients here we have four, we have negative eight, and then we have five and negative one. As we've been doing, let me just uh, remove that, get some space there. So bring this four down. Four times a half will give us two. An addition of this two, you have uh, negative six. Negative six times a half, you get negative three. Add here, you have two. Then two times that, you have positive one. Add that and have zero. So the quadratic equation, therefore, is four lambda square minus six lambda plus two is the quadratic equation that we want to solve. So we want to solve this quadratic equation to see that we find other Roots. Now remember the first root that we have is the half. So let's solve that quadratic equation. Uh, my space is uh, small, so I have to be erasing all the time. So, so what you have is uh, 4 lambda square minus 6 lambda minus 2 equals to 0. This is plus two. Uh, no, so dividing through by four, and then you have uh, lambda square minus three out of two lambda plus a half is zero. Now, so this we need to factorize this. We need to factorize this, and when you do this, you get that uh, factorizing this, you have a uh, lambda minus one then lambda minus a half is equal to zero when you factorize this. And you know how to factorize, how to factorize this. 
Now, so then, what do we have here? What we have here is that, what we see here is that uh, lambda 2 is 1 from here, and from this lambda 3, lambda 3 will be a half. So lambda 1 was a half. This lambda 3 is also half. So we have uh, similar, we have similar eigenvalues, a half, a half. And then lambda, the other lambda 1, 2 is 1. So these are the eigenvalues, and that is the answer to question, question A. So question A, we just write it. Just write, let me give it to all of this. So for question A, we're saying that uh, the eigenvalues are lambda 1 is the, a half, lambda 2 is also a half, and lambda 3 is 1. Don't, don't worry about uh, the, the changing of those numbers. Any kind of lambda 1 and any kind of lambda 2 and so on. So there's no problem. Now, so what are we required now for question two? Question two, we are required to be, we are required to find the basis for each eigen space. So in other words, find the eigenvalues, you know, eigenvectors. Find the eigenvectors. So solution for B. So once when lambda is a half, one to see what will be the eigenvector. So let's subtract this half from the moving diagonal of T. What do you get when you subtract? There was, uh, what was T? What was T? T was, uh, let's just write what T was. T was a one, a half, negative one, one, three out of two, negative two, any other half, a uh, half, and the negative one half. Now, want to subtract, want to subtract a half from the living diagonal. So what we want is um, t minus a half i multiplied by x and equal to zero, where x, where x is a, a vector, again vector x y. But let me use W. Let me use W. So where W is the again vector x y z. Now, so when I subtract a half i from this matrix, then I would have a half at this point, and this would remain a half. This will remain negative one. This will remain one. So I have three out of two minus a half, and this is one. And this is negative two, and then we have a half, we have a half, and this will be negative one. So this one is the only modeling by x, y, z, and then equating to zero, 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 to find the value of x, y, z. Okay, so from here, as we've been doing before, we go straight to Gaussian elimination. Let's go straight to Gaussian elimination. I remember this, this is what we want to use for Gaussian elimination. So let me do it the left side. Because we don't we do not require much space, just a little space for Gaussian elimination. Now, for Gaussian elimination, we have a half, a half, negative one, 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 negative two, a half, a half, negative one, zero, zero, zero. So I want to multiply this first row by two, multiply first row by two, to get the, the new first row, and that will give me one, one, negative two, zero, and I want this one to be remain the way it is, and this one to remain the way it is. 
Now, use this first row to create a zero in each of these other rows. So the first row may be weight is multiply it by, no, just subtract from row two and you have zero, zero, zero. Multiply by a half and subtract from row three and you get zero, zero, zero. So that what we then have is x plus y minus two z is zero. Now, so from here, we all see that y is a free variable and z is also a free variable, but x is a leading variable. So let's say let y be a and z be b. So for, if that is the case, then what is x? x will be negative y plus 2b, no, plus 2z. But y is a, so that is negative a. Z is b. And so what is w there for the eigenvector we are looking for? So it was x, y, z. But x is, uh, x is negative a plus 2b. And y is, uh, y is A, and Z is B. So let's say A plus zero and B plus zero. In fact, this you can write it this way. You can write it as A into negative one, one, zero, and B into two, zero, one. So this is W, this is a W, the eigenvector. Now, what was the question? The question was find the basis for each eigenspace. The so let me just, let me just delete this part. So it's from this W that we get the answer to that question. So the eigenspace, now the basis corresponding to lambda is a half is suppose the set of all the eigenvectors the set of all the eigenvectors corresponding to this eigenvalue. And the that eigen, those eigenvectors, the eigenvectors that we have there is negative one, one, zero, and two, zero, one. So this is the basis. From our definition, we say that this is a set of all the eigenvectors corresponding to that specific eigenvalue. And these are the eigenvectors. So this is the basis corresponding to this eigenvalue. Now, so we had another eigenvalue that was lambda one, lambda is equals to one. So let's just do that. Lambda is equals to one. So when lambda is equals to one, let's subtract one from the leading diagonal. I, I can see the matrix here. So when I subtract to one, I will have a zero. And then that is a half, then negative one. Then this is a one. Subtract one from three out of two. That's three out of two minus one. The same as three minus two out of two, which is a half. And then subtract, okay, this is negative two. Let's come to the last row which is a half, a half, subtract one from negative a half. So it is negative a half minus one, and this is the same as negative three out of two. 
Ini dari tutorial of two. Then multiply this by W. Let's call W to be X Y Z. Let's call W to be X Y Z and equal to zero zero. Using the Gaussian elimination, what we have there. Uh, remember that the first non entry here, non zero entry here should be a one. It should not be zero. The first entry here should not be zero since we have uh, non zero entries below. So we can interchange the first two rows. We can change the first two rows to have one, a half, negative two, then zero, a half, negative one. And this one remains as a half, a half, negative three out of two, zero, zero, zero. And this goes to, this one remains where it is. Now, this one already has a zero, so we just leave it the way it is. But now multiply this by a half. And subtract from row three. So this by a half subtract from that over zero. This by a half subtract from that. The same as a, a half minus a quarter. So the even times a half will be a quarter. And the same thing there before. So this is the same as two minus one, which is a quarter. And then we have um, this by a half give us negative one. So what we then have is negative three out of four plus one. This is the same as two, negative three plus two. So this is negative one out of two. Negative one out of two, zero. This was zero. Now, so what do we have now? The first row remains where it is. The second row, we can even model it by, by two. We can even model it by two, or just leave it the way it is. But then, multiply it by a half and subtract from this. Because this by a half will be a quarter. Subtract that a quarter from a quarter, we have a zero. So multiply this by a half, you get negative a half. And then this negative a half subtract from negative a half, and that gives you zero. So from here, what we see, we see the first equation says that x plus a half of y minus two z is zero. And the second equation says that a half of y minus z is zero. Let me just create some space here so that we can see what, uh, what we have. And these are very easy things. We've been doing them. We did the, the same in our previous videos. So this is just a repetition of what we already did. Now, from here, we can see that only z is a free variable. Only z is a free variable. Yeah, so, let's say let z be a. So, if z is a, using this last equation, what would be y? y will be 2z. y will be 2z, which is 2a. What about x? This is the first equation, x would be negative y, negative a half of y plus 2z. But y is, is 2a, so this is negative a. When I multiply this by 2a, negative a. And what about this 2z? This is 2a. So this gives us so what about W there, which was X, Y, Z? W will be X, X is what? X is A, and Y is 2A, 
and z is a. So this can be written as a into one to one, one to one. And so what is the eigenvalue? No, no, what is the, <coughs> the basis? So the basis corresponding to this is what we want to write. So the basis here is the set comprising of the eigenvectors, and the eigenvector there is one, two, one. So the set comprising of this is the basis. Now remember that <clears throat> we said we would denote a basis by this. But the eigen the eigen space or is this eigen space. So this one means the eigen space of corresponding to lambda is equals to one. So we can write it this way. This is what it was. The eigen space would be this way. We set a into one to one. So using the same knowledge, you can just write the basis as this. Just write it this way. So this one, whenever I see this, then I remember that this is the eigenvector here. What is inside is the eigenvector when uh, lambda is one. When the eigenvalue is one, so that's what I, that's how I, I understand this. Now let's look at question C. Question C, we've done a similar question, and question C says is T diagonalizable, and from our previous knowledge, we say that T would be diagonalizable if, since T is a three by three matrix, we can get three linearly independent eigenvectors. And that's what we got. We got three independent, linearly independent eigenvectors. The first eigenvector was, the first eigenvector was what? Get one, one, um, get negative one, one, zero. And then we had two, zero, one. And then we had uh, one, two, one. So if we were to be asked to find P, then this is, oh, in fact, the question is S, S. So the question is find S that diagonalizes T. Find S that diagonalizes C. Uh, T. So S is this. S is this. So we just arrange the eigenvectors as columns. So this is S. And the question is the diagonal matrix D. So what was the eigenvalue corresponding to this eigenvector? And it was a half. It was a half. So the rest put zero, zero, then zero. And then this one. The eigenvalue corresponding to this eigenvector was also half, then zero, then we have zero, zero. Then the eigenvector value corresponding to this eigenvector was one. So this becomes D. And remember what we said that we can arrange these ones. We just arrange the values, the, the eigenvalues in D in relation to how we arrange the eigenvectors. So the first eigenvector, its eigenvalue comes first. The second eigenvector, its eigenvalue comes second, and so on. So that's how we do question C. So the answer to question C is that, yes, T is diagonalizable, because we found that we had three linearly independent eigenvectors for a three by three matrix. Let's look at the next question. Question four, you are given this matrix and you have asked to find matrix orthogonal matrix P. Now I'll underline the word orthogonal because the way you find an orthogonal matrix, P 
P is not the same way we've been finding P in the previous examples. In the previous examples, we've been taking the eigenvectors and then arrange them in column form. We've been arranging them in column form. The eigenvectors are arranged in column form. And that is how we've been finding matrix P. But in the current example that we have here, the word is orthogonal matrix. So what that means is that after finding the eigenvectors, first of all, we would um, normalize those eigenvectors. You know how to normalize eigenvectors. Is that you take the norm or the length of each vector, length of that vector, and then multiply the reciprocal of this length times the vector. So we shall see how that happens. I will looked at that one before, we looked at that notion before. So the only difference, the only different thing here is that we shall get the eigenvectors and normalize them first before we form them. So solution, first we find the uh, characteristic polynomial minus lambda times the trace of A, the trace the trace of F plus the determinant of F. So this is lambda square minus the trace is nine. So nine lambda plus the determinant of this matrix, which is 18 minus four. 18 minus four, that gives us 14. Now equate this to zero and factorize. So when you do that, you get lambda minus seven lambda minus 2 is equal to 0 when you factorize this, which means that the eigenvalues are 7 and 2. These are the eigenvalues. Now, let's get the eigenvector corresponding to 7. So when the lambda is 7, let's subtract 10 from the leading diagonal. Double negative 1, 2, then the two negative four zero zero and uh, this comes to this is negative one so let's approach seven from here this will be negative one and this will be negative four so this is negative one two zero multiply this by two and add it to this there was zero Multiply this by two and add it to this, but zero and then zero. So what we then have, if x, if w was x, y, if w was x, y, what we have here is negative x plus two y is zero, but x is a leading, is a leading variable and y is a true variable. So let y, let y be a. That y is. So that means that then x becomes 2x. X becomes 2x. What about w? So w will then be w will then be 2a or a into 2, 1. So the eigenvector, the first eigenvector is 2, 1. That is the first eigenvector. So we will normalize this. We will normalize this later. So let's just find the next eigenvector when lambda is two. So when lambda is two, when lambda is two, let's subtract two from the leading diagonal. We have four, two, two, then this is one, zero, zero. And this gives us four, two, zero. What about here? Zero, zero. So what I've just done is that I've multiplied this by a half and subtracted the result from this. So this by a half from that is a zero. This by a half is one from that is a zero and so on. So what we now have is that four X plus two Y is zero. So let Y be, let Y be N. 
So that would then mean that uh, that x would be negative one half. Negative one half of x. Negative one half of x. Because this one so there will be negative two divided by four. So that w, the new w corresponding to lambda is equal to two is a into negative one half and this is one one or we can say that is negative one two when i multiply this by two i multiply this by two i have negative one two so this is the other eigen vector so let me just write just write what i have let me write what i have what i have is that when the eigen value was seven we found the eigen vector to be 2, 1. Found the eigen vector to be 2, 1. So this is the basis. And when uh, he was, when lambda was, was 2, we found the eigen vector to be 1, 2, negative 1, 2. Now, so we have the eigen vector, this eigen vector and that eigen vector. Let's normalize the eigen vectors. Normalize 2, 1. So to normalize 2, 1, first of all, get the length. First, get the length of 2, 1. So length, length of 2, 1 of this vector is 2 square, which is 4, plus 1 square which is one, the square root of that, which is root five. So that normalized vector there, two, one. So let me call this two, one as u. Let me call it u, let me call it u, u to be two, one. So the normalized u will be u with a cap. And I want to say it will be this u times one over the length of u. And the length of u is what we found to be 1 over 4. So this then gives us 2 over the length, and which is that. And then this 1 over the length, 1 over the length. So this is our normalized vector. Now let's also normalize. Let me call this, um, let me call v. Let me call this vector. I can vector b. So I want to normalize b, so I get first of all the length of b. So the length of b will be one negative one square, which is one, and then a two square, which is uh, four. And so this uh, again goes the length root five. So that the normalized b, normalized b therefore, is this vector times one over the length. And so that will be negative 1 out of root 5 and 2 out of root 5. So that is uh, our normalized vectors. These are our normalized vectors. So the P, the orthogonal matrix, and you remember the word orthogonal matrix for it. So P will now be the matrix formed by these normalized agent vectors arranged as columns in column form. So this would be 2 out of uh, root 5, and then 1 out of root 5. And this other one was negative 1 out of root 5, and this is 2 out of root 5. So this is the normalized vector. What the word normalized, no, no, this is the, um, the orthogonal matrix B, orthogonal matrix B. And the word orthogonal here means that if I were to take this matrix, the transpose of this matrix P would be the same as the inverse of the matrix P as an orthogonal matrix. The matrix orthogonal is the transpose of that matrix is the same as the inverse of that matrix. Now, so what is D? What is D? This normalized eigen vector. Was the eigen vector corresponding to lambda is equals to seven? Uh, 
And this normalized eigenvector was the eigenvector corresponding to lambda is equals to two. Lambda is equals to two. So this might be. This might be. But the only trick was at this point that it be what was to be orthogonal. So we are first of all to normalize the eigenvectors before we arrange them in column form to form. Now, so if you wanted to find the inverse of this matrix, you would use the same way, or since it's an orthogonal matrix, the transpose of this would just be the same as the inverse. So you know the transpose, you arrange this row as a column, and then this row as a second column. So that would be P inverse. But the question wanted us to find P and D, and that's what we just done. Now let's look at this question five, and you notice that uh, I've uh, set this question five to be similar to question four, and um, I want to emphasize on how to get orthogonal matrix. As we've done in question four, you remember that we would want first of all to get when it comes to this part B, we'll get the eigen vectors and then normalize them, and arrange the normalized eigen vectors as columns to form. So that is the only thing that I want to emphasize. Now, so let's go straight to the solution. Now, I'll avoid much details because you already know the details. But first of all, we need to get the characteristic polynomial. And the characteristic polynomial here is given by lambda cubed minus 2 and minus lambda square, multiplied by the press of A multiplied by the trace of a plus lambda multiplied by cofactor 1, 1 plus uh, the cofactor in position 2, 2 plus the cofactor in the position 3, 3. Then minus the determinant of matrix. Now, so this, you know how to do it. And when I did this, I found that I would have lambda cube minus, so let me just add 4 minus 4 plus 4, and that will give me 4 lambda square. And then this will give me, just a minute, so then I will have plus lambda into, now I've got this determinants as a negative 4 plus 12 and plus 4, or minus 4. I got it as minus 4. And then this other determinant, I got it as zero. So this gives me lambda cube minus four lambda square. And when I do this, I get four lambda. It's equals to zero. So this is the characteristic polynomial. I want to solve it for no characteristic equation because I was saying it goes to zero. So let me solve it for lambda. That means I would uh, factorize and I get lambda square minus 4 lambda plus 4 is equals to 0. So that means I can also factorize this. And when I factorize this, I would have lambda into lambda minus 2 square is equals to 0. So this then means that this lambda is 0, lambda 1 is 0, and then lambda 2 is um, 2 and lambda 3 is also 2. So this is what I get as the characteristic no, the eigenvalues. These are the eigenvalues, three eigenvalues. Let me see, uh, let me now find the eigenvectors. So when uh, lambda 1 is 0, let me subtract 0 from the leading diagonal. And I would have um, zero. No, it's a problem zero from the leading data. I would have four. What was our matrix? That was, uh, that was four. Then there was number six. And then there was two. And then this is two. Subtract four from this, zero from that. And then this. And then I have. 2 and negative 6, 
and four. Zero is not. And so when I reduce this, of course I'm not playing that by W and my W is X Y Z. So when I reduce this, I will have um you can just multiply this by multiply this by it. Let me just let me maintain the four four. Three, six, two, zero. Multiply this by a half. The first equation by a half and subtract from the second equation. So no, this first row by a half and subtract from the second row. So this by a half is two from that is zero. This by a half is negative three. From this I have negative one. This by a half is one from this have one then zero. Again, the same thing by a half and subtract from row three, I'll get uh, zero. Then this is by a half is negative three and subtract it from negative six, you get negative three. And then this by a half, you get one, subtract from that, you have a three. Zero. So this will go to four, negative six, to zero, and now I want to use this here to create a zero here so that the first row, the second row remains where it is, and then I'll be subtract, I'll be multiplying row two by three and adding to row three. So multiply row two by three, add it to row three, hit adding. Subtracting, subtracting. So this by three would be negative three. Negative three added to this. No. Negative three subtracted from negative three. That is a zero. Now this by three would be three. Subtracted from three about zero. So this is what we now have. This is what we now have. What we have is that. Uh, 4x minus 6y plus 2z is 0, and this other one is negative y plus z is 0. So, you have these two equations from which we can see clearly that z is a free variable. So, we let it to be to be n. Let it to be n. So, let me just get So I've just said that z is free, the variable select z is a. So what does the second equation then tell us? The second equation then tells us that y would be also a. Y would also be a, because negative y would be negative z. Now what about x? So then we have the first equation telling us that for x would be 6y minus 2z. But then for x would be what? 6y, y is a, minus 2z, z is a. So that x would be 3 out of 2a, when you divide through by 4. This will be 3 out of 2, and this will be a what? No, half. The half of it. But this, what was this? I didn't even need this. I, I'll just have said, just have said for just have said for n. Just have said for n and say that then x becomes n. X becomes n. Because it does the same thing I get here. Because this would be this would be what? 2 into this would be 2 then. So that is just 2. That is just n. So I'll just have said that. So x is n. So what, I, what about w? The eigenvalue something. I'm just doing that. Okay, so W is X is A and um, Y is A and Z is A. So these of them are A into one, one. 
so that the eigenvector in data corresponding to lambda is equals to lambda is equals zero is one 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 and then Now, so let's find the eigen vector corresponding to the other lambda. The other lambda was a uh, two, and it was of multiplicity, double multiplicity. So let's find, let's now find when uh, lambda is two. Let's subtract two from the leading diagonal, and you have two there, there is six. This was two, I think, that was two. So plus two from the leading diagonal only, and this will be two negative six here, yeah. and this will be two, and then this is two negative six here, yeah. and this will be what two zero zero zero, and uh, reduce this. You remember there's a uh, x y z multiplied by x y z and then it goes to zero zero zero. So we just using Gaussian elimination structure because I have data steps. We are familiar with them. So this will be two, that is six, two, zero. And uh, of course you can see that this will be zeros. And this will be zeros. From here, what we now see is two X minus two Y plus two Z. Is zero. X and no, y and z are free variables. So let y be a and let z be b. So that x would be 3a. 3a, when I take the other side, 6 then divided by 2. And then this will be negative b. Negative b. So what about w? That will be 3a. Minus b. And y here is a plus zero. And b here, no, z here is b plus zero. In fact, what we are seeing here is a into three, one, zero, plus b into, b into what? Negative one. Zero one. Negative one zero one. Negative one zero one. So so E two you said would be three three one zero and negative one zero. So that is E two. Those are the even vectors. These are the eigen vectors when lambda is two. What is it? This is zero. From the other one is three one two. Now, so what is the question? We had uh, when e was zero, we found the eigen vector was uh, one one one. This was the eigen vector. So now we want to answer the last question B. We read out the eigen vectors, that is part of question B. But what it remains is to find the orthogonal matrix. That means you first of all find the normalized eigen vectors. The normalized eigen vectors. Let's normalize the first one when lambda is zero. So let me call it U. Or let me just it's already let me just call it. Or let me call it let me call it. Let me call it. So that the normalized U will be one 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 multiplied by the length of this, which is no, one over the length, which is root three. So this is one over root three, one over root three, and one over root three. Okay, now let's now normalize this. I want to call it V. I want to call it normalized V. The length here I can see to, no, no, it's 9 square 
square plus one square is root ten. So three out of root ten, one out of root ten, and zero. And then let me call this one. Let me call it T or yeah, call it T. So the normalized T will now the length here is root two. So it will not be length. So I have a negative one out of root two, then zero, then one out of root two. So what is P? What is P? P therefore, we just arrange these vectors as column. One out of root three, one out of root three, and then we, then we get an upstream and get an upstream. So want to write it above. Do I write it above? So P therefore is one out of root three, one out of root three, one out of root three. That's the first column. The second column is three out of root 10, three out of root 10, three out of root 10. And the last one is the negative one out of root two, zero, one out of root two. So this is the orthogonal matrix P, which diagonalizes matrix B here. I remember, I think in this question I was using, I was using matrix P instead of B in one of the answers, but it's, it's B not. Now, so the question is, find the diagonal matrix of B. So D, we just arrange, we arrange these columns. We arrange, um, the eigenvalues of these eigenvectors in the order in which they appear. So D will be this eigenvector was corresponding to eigenvalue zero. I think so. Eigenvalue zero. So the rest will be zero here. And then this other eigenvector was corresponding to Lambda is two, and this other one also corresponding to lambda is two. So this is the but you can arrange, you can arrange and have them. You can even arrange P and the beginning this, beginning this, beginning this, and follow this, then end with this, so that and then zero zero comes to the bottom. Can you see how to arrange? So what about P inverse? P inverse will just be the transpose of this matrix, the transpose of P, because P is a token. <laughs> now let's look at this question six. Question six says these are two by two matrix like that. The null space or the basis corresponding to lambda is two. See, this is this two is the eigenvalue, and this five is the eigenvalue. So then, the eigenvector is that, and the eigenvector here is that. So they're just telling us that when eigenvalue is two, when Eigenvalue is two. The corresponding eigenvector is two, and when the eigenvalue is five, the corresponding eigenvector is one. And the question is find P, find this matrix P. So for us to find this matrix P, we must re remember that P is given us. 
B D B inverse. Where P here is a matrix formed by arranging these agent vectors in column form as columns. So this would be our P. This would be our P. What about our D? Our D, so this eigenvector here, its eigenvalue is 2. And this eigenvector here, its eigenvalue is 5. So this is a P. You only need to get P inverse. You only need to get P inverse. And P inverse would be 1 over the determinant of P. The determinant of P here is... Um, 2 minus 1, which is 1, then times the adjoint of P, where we just reverse this getting diagonal and change the signs of this other diagonal. So this is our P inverse 1, 31, 31, 2. So the question then is what is P? So just multiply this by that, by this, and so it gets. Let me create some space here. So this means that B is P, D, P inverse, but P is 2, 1, 1, 1, D is 2, 0, 0, 5, and P inverse is 1, that is 1, and that is 1, 2. So when you do that, you can multiply that, so I was getting negative 1, negative 3, 6, 6, 8. Now let's look what uh, question B. Now, from above, we've seen that uh, matrix B is given by P, D, P inverse. Now, so the power on B here is 1. So that means D is raised to power 1. But now when we get B raised to 6, we would have P, B raised to 6, then P inverse. That's how we shall get B raised to 6. Now we, we've already learned how to raise the matrices to powers in our previous video. Now, so in this example, in this example 6, we found from above that matrix P is 2, 1, 1, 1. We've also found P inverse to be 1, negative 1, negative 1, 2, and we found D to be 2, 5, 2, 0, 0, 5. This one was given in our question, in the question. And therefore, B raised to 6 would be P times D raised to 5, now raised to 6, B raised to 6 times P inverse. And this is the same as P is 2, 1, 1, 1. And then D is 2, 0, 0, 5. Now, so we raise this 2 to 6 and then this 5 to 6. Because we know that it's 0 raised to 6, we just be 0. So we just raise elements along the diagonal and then model by P inverse which is uh, 1, negative 1, negative 1, 2. So if this happens, then you get negative 15, 4, 9, 7. This is 9, 7. And then that 1,000 122 
and at this point we would have negative 15, 561, and then here we would have 31186. So this is B raised to 6. But what the question wants is B plus B raised to 6. But question A has already given us B. We found B to be negative 1, 6, and then 3, negative 8. No, no, this is negative 3, then this is 8. So when I add this to B raised to 6, which I have above, B raised to 6 is negative 15, 497. And this is in negative 15, 561, 31, 122, and 31, 186. This sum would then give me what the question wants, which is negative 15, 498, and uh, 31, 128, and this part, I would have negative 15, 564, and this other element here is that one, 194. So this is what the question wants. And what is what was very important is to know how to get B raised to 6, but we had done this earlier in our previous video. So we had already said that if B is raised to any number here, supposing B was raised to, to N, then we would have P times D raised to N times P inverse. So that's how you find a matrix raised to any number. And you remember in our previous video, we even found the square root of P, and we said it would just be the same as P times the square root of D times B inverse. So that's how we do this question six. Let's look at the next question. Now, so this question six is just, question five, seven here is similar to the previous question. We are given a symmetric matrix here, and you know what a symmetric matrix is? That the transpose of B is the same as B. That's what we mean by symmetric matrix. So if you get the transpose of B, the same as P, so P is the same as P transpose. That's what I mean by symmetric matrix. Just to remind those who may not be, not be remembered. Now, so the question here, what is important to me is the word the orthogonal. That we will find the agent values, agent vectors, and then the normalized agent vectors, and uh, write the normalized agent vectors as the column of P, columns of P. That's what we want. And then also tell us what P is. So very fast, let's find the characteristic polynomial lambda Q. You know how to do that, lambda Q minus the trace, multiplied by lambda square. This is a trace of P. And then plus the cofactors multiplied by lambda, with the cofactor in the position one one, the cofactor in the position two two, and the cofactor in the position three three. Then minus the determinant of p. Now, when you do that, what you then get is um, lambda cubed. I uh, got plus five lambda square. You do it at your own time and see that you get the same thing. This is 42 lambda, then minus 1 for 3. Equal to 0 and solve for lambda. So I did factorize this and found that um, when you factorize this, fact, you discover that lambda 1 would be negative 3. And then lambda 2 would be 6. And then lambda 3 would be 8. 
So if you don't know how to get this characteristic, this uh, eigen values, you can always ask on the link. I always show you how I got them, but uh, I'm I'm hoping that the previous examples that I've shown you would help you to do this. Now, so then what do I find the eigen values eigen vectors to be? And uh, I found that the eigen value eigen vector when uh, eigen value is negative three, I found it to be I found it to be one one. I found this to be one one one. And then I found the eigen vector when lambda is six to be negative five. And then when lambda is h, I found the eigen vector to be possibly negative eight. Possibly just write it properly. So possibly negative eight not h. Lambda three is supposed to be negative eight. So just confirm, confirm and sorry get. And so that one, when lambda is negative eight. I found it to be negative one, negative two, and then three. Negative one, negative two, and then three. Yeah, that's what I found. These are the eigen vectors, and these are the eigen values. Then I now normalize this and arrange them in column form. Just normalize and arrange them in column form. And I know you know how to do that. So when I do that, and then I found that a P will be. I want to arrange it will be negative five out of root forty two four out of root two forty two and three out of root forty two. Then this other one and this one correct, this is one. Is one. Remember, it was negative five for one. Negative five for one. This other one will be one out of root three. One out of root three. And then one out of root three. And then this the last one will be one out of uh, root 14. And then two out of root 14. And then uh, that is three out of fourteen. Because this was one, two, and negative three. Now what about D? This its eigen value was what? Was six. Then zero zero. Zero. The eigen value for this eigen vector was negative three. And then the last eigen value was negative eight. So this is the key. The question does not want us to find P transpose. But it's easy if you want, you can just get P transpose from your state. Make this first column. If this first row to be the first column, second row to be the second column, third row to be the third column, and so on. Now let's look at uh, the next question. I'm now moving faster because you already have the concepts. You've done similar questions before. Look at this question. We've done a similar question. <clears throat> we are given a three by three matrix, and we're told that um, the first eigen value is zero, and its corresponding eigen vector is one one. The second eigen value is one, and there are two of them. And they have two eigen vectors, and the first eigen vector is that, the second eigen vector is that. Compute the determinant of a raised to four plus n. So, for you to get a raised to four plus, the volume must be what a is. And a, as you've seen previously, will be given by p times d times p inverse. This is a. 
But what you see, he just, just arranged the vectors. He just arranged the vectors. He just arranged the vectors as columns of two. One, zero, one. What about D? This eigenvector at zero has eigenvalue. And this other one, I can even rearrange the way uh, we had talked before and begin with this one. And begin with, the, with this and then end with that. Just rearrange. Just rearrange this. I want the zeros to be at the top. Let me rearrange. And begin with one, two, zero. One, zero, one, and then one, 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 because I know that this will be zero. And they saw that D, now, this eigen vector has the eigen value one. This eigen vector has the eigen value one. And this eigen vector has eigen value zero. So this is a D. Now we can find P inverse. You can find P inverse, you know how to get the inverse of a matrix. And P inverse, I was getting, I was getting one, zero, negative one, then a two, negative one, negative one, then negative two, one, two. If you don't know how to get the inverse of a three by three matrix or a higher order matrices, then you can check one of my previous videos on how to do the same. Now, so what is there? What is there? A is, a is P, D, P inverse. Just arrange them and multiply. We'll get A to be three, negative one, negative two. And then two, zero, negative two, and then two, negative one, negative one. This is A. When you multiply P times P times P inverse in that order, this will be A. So what is A inverse? What is A raised to four? Now, what is A raised to four? So from the previous knowledge, Rs to 4 will be given by matrix P times B raised to 4 times P inverse. But what is P? We found P in our previous, uh, previously, we found it to be rows P. Of course, we we found a fee by arranging these eigen vectors as column, and our P was uh, one, two, zero, and then one, zero, one, and this was one, one, one. And then D, we just found D, we were given the, the eigen vector values and so we began with one two zero one two zero the eigen value is one zero zero and then we followed by one zero one one zero one the eigen value was also one and then we followed it by one 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 whose eigen value was zero now since we are we are taking D raised to 4, we just raise, raise the, the numbers along this diagonal to 4. So that we have 1 raised to 4, 0, 0. But 1 raised to 4 just be 1. And again, this 1 raised to 4 just be 1, and so on. And then, followed by P inverse, which we found to be 1, 2, negative 2. 
and then 0, negative 1, 1, and then negative 1, negative 1, 2. So this gives you P inverse, no, RS to 4. When you do this, when you multiply this matrix by that, and then multiply the result by the next matrix, you get this answer to be 3, 2, 2, negative 1, 0, negative 1, and then 2, negative 2, this is also negative 2 here, and then negative 1. So this is RS to 4. But what the question wants is RS to 4 plus A. So we take this RS to 4 plus RS to 4 plus A. And when I did this, when you do this, when you just uh, add these two matrices, it's very easy to add matrices. We all know how to do that. You get 6, 4, 4, and then you get negative 2, 0, negative 2. Then at this point, you have negative 4, negative 4, negative 2. But what the question wants, of course, is uh, the determinant of this sum. And it wants the determinant, actually. It wants the determinant. But the sum, the sum will be the sum of RS to 4 plus A is the same as 6, negative 2, 4, and then 4, 0, negative 4, and then 4, negative 2, negative 2. But now the determinant is 0. That's all the question wants. So at your own time, you can do it slowly and see how to get that. But I've already shown you what you need to do. I've already shown you what you need to do.